Hello, class. Welcome to uh, today's lecture. All right, uh, let me show you my screen and kind of see what we want to do today. I want to give you, a, you know, some more, I guess, website layout options, styles. There's so many different types of layouts you can use for your website. So let's look at a few of uh, some, some popular, right, uh, websites or, you know, layouts, I guess. So here is the Zoom um, website. Uh, what I want to look at is basically if you look at the, when you, when you scroll down the top navigation, kind of like it stays in place. Even the bottom, the bottom buttons you see here, they are not really, they're not moving. So, you know, that might be something you want to do. Um, also, when you maximize the page, you see that that top banner doesn't really move. It, it, it spans the page. What we've done previously is where we keep the width to 1200 Pixels. So let's see how we can let's see how you know how we can uh, do this. Where you have a banner, or you have a navigation that goes the, the entire width of your browser, and then also some of these buttons here. You know they're kind of like they make your website look more professional, more uh, contemporary or modern, should I say? Um, so let's 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 see how we can do that. Also, we're going to look at. Um, uh, so here's a Twitter, like a banner. Uh, more importantly, how you know these pictures are rounded. We're going to look at how we do that. You know, do a rounded picture or you know, rounded photo and put something in there. I just did a search. And you can see there's so many options of how, you know, you can stick an image um, in your banner, something like that. So we're going to try to do that, maybe even with a border around that image. So, well, first of all, let's see if we can work on this kind of a fixed div, top or bottom of your browser. Okay, so you want to open up your Edit Plus there, or your text editor. Let's get a new page and just lay out the, now you should be, you know, you should understand how that works. So let's just put the basic syntax in there. Uh, your text editor might have the syntax already. So, you know, let me just set up mine here. All right, and the body tags. All right, so a title. Let's say we're going to call this, um, just going to say web, web layout, you know, website. Layout. Let's just say website layout two. I think we've done one before. You just give it a something descriptive about what we're trying to do. Or, you know, continues, right? I don't know, whatever you want the title to be, it's not a real big deal. All right, I'm going to just save that file. When you start a new project, always a good idea to create a new like a new folder for it. So we had website layout before, so website layout. I'm just going to say new. All right. Just going to call that the index page. 
So set up your basic uh, layout and let's let's move forward. So the first thing you want to use is your you want to put a div in there. Always a good idea to have a div like your container div. So let's create a container div that holds everything, all the items that are going to go in there, holds everything in place. All right. So that's the container. All right, right away, let's create our uh, CSS uh, connection. You don't have to type all this out. If you have before, you can just copy and paste it from where you had it before. I'm just going to type it out quickly. Yeah, some of this re repetitive stuff, you can just copy it and paste it, right? Um, no need to type from scratch. Style sheet, text slash CSS. I'm going to call it a um, layout. OK, you can call it whatever name you like, but it's a CSS extension because that's the external style sheet. So get a new a blank page here for your CSS. And let's put the container there. background color like blue um, width now the width is going to be tricky um, but let's see I'm just going to say that 1200 just for now uh, we wanted to expand the whole page right but that's just Take it one step at a time. We'll give it a just a height temporarily for now, and we can take it and I always fix that. So let's save that. That's layout two dot CSS. So save as save it in the same folder in the same folder. Okay, so let's preview. I'm going to drag this here. Let's preview our work. So open up your folder and drag the file to the browser right here. All right, so all you see now is, you know, just your container box. Okay, um, let's center it. We're going to center um, the container. So margin left, margin Okay, save, refresh the page. All right, so you want to confirm that your, your container is centered. And again, let's get rid of this pesky space that always appears um, just above the container. For that, you need to go into the body. And say margin. Like I said, some a lot of this is repeti you know repetitive stuff, so you can just grab it from your old files, paste it there, and just keep going. Or you can type it from scratch. This is there's nothing new about this part. All right, save, and we want to get rid of this space here. So refresh the page, and that space is gone. Okay. So. We want to do this top banner, right? That spans uh, the whole page, this banner here. 
right? Now we have two things we can do. So watch this. Let's say I'm going to open up my container as usual. And I'm just going to call that, uh, say, top. It's not really a banner. It's like uh, maybe like the few links in there, right? The few links up there. So let me just call it, let's just call it top links. You're free to call it whatever you want, but I'm just going to call it top links. Top links bar. How about that? Okay. And then I'm going to close it. So this top links bar is inside, you know, remember the sandwich? It's inside the container div. So let's go to the CSS, copy that, paste. And this is going to be our top links bar. Copy. All right, put it here, paste it over there. All right, so let's give it a background color of, let's just say, I don't know, dark blue. The width is the same width as the container. The height is going to be, you know, not so tall. So let's give it a height of, let's see what 100 PX looks like. We don't need this here because it's exactly the same width, so it's not going to go anywhere. Kind of, it's going to be, it's going to fit in the width. So we don't need the margin and all that stuff. We need the margin for the container because, you know, you have excess space on the left and the right side. But here, we're not going to have any excess space. The width is exactly the same width as the container. So save that. Refresh the page. All right, so maybe a little bit thinner. Let's just say 80. All right, let's say that works. Okay, so what we're trying to do is we want, we want that top banner to span across, right? But we have a problem. That's not going to happen here because we've put the banner right inside the container. So, you know, based on what we've done so far, that banner is not going to span the whole, you know, the whole browser, the width of the browser. All right. It's going to be exactly the width of the container. So we need to reposition this, um, this top links banner. So I'm going to take it out of here, right? Cut and put it outside the container, put it right there outside the container. Okay, it's gonna be right outside the container. It's the first div that appears before the container starts. So it's kind of like, it's gonna be independent of the container, right? Let's save that and see what happens. Um, well, you may not notice the difference because the colors are exactly the same. Um, so if I refresh the page, okay, it shifted. So that's a good thing. Right, so you can see that the banner is up there right now. So the banner is 1200 pixels. Now we need to expand it, right? So the two things we can do with the width, we can go to the CSS and we can make the width, like take out the width entirely, like no width. No width is going to be automatically 100%. Like it's going to span the whole week of the browser so see what i mean so save refresh the page and so you can see that it spans the whole week of the page right it's going to be you know right there it's going to span the whole thing which is exactly what we're trying to do all right um well some some people like to say a hundred percent just to be more specific with your command. So if we say 100%, it's going to be the same thing. Refresh the page, it's going to be that. Now, what we're trying to do, uh, you know, keep moving on. If you scroll down on this Zoom page, 
right? You see that the banner is fixed. It doesn't move. So that's what we're trying to do. We don't want it to move. Right now, we have ours moving when we scroll down, okay? So let's see uh, what we can do about that. So some of the code we're going to use now, we haven't actually used it before. But you might have found some of it in your, you know, your research, you know, your previous assignments, you know. But we haven't, I don't think that we have used it so far. So here it goes. So there's a set of styles or properties called position, right? In fact, you have, when you're trying to use position, uh, let me close this. When you're trying to do position, you have uh, about three options with position. You can do fixed, you can do absolute, and you can do relative positioning, okay? They all have different uses, uh, so you have to see, when you try one, you see exactly how it works if that's what you're trying to do. Uh, but for this purpose here, what we need is the fixed option, I think. So we say position fixed. Basically, we're saying that div, we don't want it to move at all. Don't move from exactly where you put where we put it. So to stay there, fixed. Save. Now before we refresh the page, you see that the blue banner, you know, it, it moves when we scroll down. So now you refresh the page, and now you see that when you scroll, it doesn't move at all, right? There's no movement. Okay, now let's, let's check something out. I'm going to put some random text in here. So let me just go here to, where do we have some text? It's going to copy this text here. That's random text, right? Copy. And I'm going to put it, you know, in this container just for now. Just want to check something else. So let's just put it in here and just paste, 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 paste. Just keep pasting. Paste, 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 paste. See, we have so much that we've pasted now, so many lines. So just do that. Save. Refresh the page. Okay, so... Um, so this is what we've put in there. All right, so you see that when you scroll, when you scroll, the top banner, it actually looks still a bit thick. Let's reduce the thickness of it. Let's say it's, um, let's see what 50 looks like, 50 pixels. All right, kind of looks like the zoom one now. Yep. Okay, so 50 is fine. So when you scroll, you can tell that that top uh, top links banner doesn't move. So I put the text here just to show us the scrolling action. All right. Okay. Very good. So now let's. Of course, you can always put some links in there. So let's put some links in there. Uh, maybe put it, you know, somewhere. Let's just see. So go in here, and say. So open this up here your top links banner. And let's put some links and say, um, contact, just, you know, just random stuff, contact directory, members, something like that. And let's make them into links. Yeah, all this part here you should be comfortable with, right? Just make four links there. Let me just paste. All right, just put four random links in the, oops, four random links there. Okay, so save, 
refresh your page and your links are right here now you obviously they're not so clear but that's it right there it'll be a bit more clear when we change the colors right or maybe we should change the color right now let's change the background color so you can see it let's just say it's going to be brown or gray gray all right it's still fixed it's not moving so we're going to use so these are the links we're going to like you know place them somewhere up top here so let's put the style in for that so remember it's going to be top top links bar a you can give it a background color and say it's background color is aqua now you're going to have um let's see for each one well it's just going to be it's not going to be the links are not going to be like bars okay so we don't need a width this time so we're going to take out the width this is, going to, this is going to be individual letters you know kind of like how the zoom um links appear here so we're not doing in like the celtics one we had the bars or the links we're not doing that right now so just individual um the individual words or text okay uh, let's take out this height also so let's see if this has been applied the aqua save okay so we have that so we don't even need that right now we're going to take out the background color in a second but let's do the text let's give the let's put the text in the body so that the text affects the whole page font family you can say rodana and font size let's say 16 px all right so refresh the page uh, that looks a little bit big go with 14. all right that looks reasonable all right so um let's take out the um let's take out the underline text decoration And we say none. Save. All right, we remove the text decoration. Let's bring it down. So line height. Line height, H E I G H T. Line height, say, I don't know, 40 PX. All right, uh, bring it down a little bit more, say, 45 okay now let's we're going to shift uh the whole block to the right side because we want it to be you know like right aligned so right aligned we're going to go in here into the top links bar i'd say text align so whatever text is in the top links bar align it to the right text align right save all right so we aligned it to the right but now it's kind of too close to the edge so we have to create some spacing on this edge here right some spacing here so So what we can do is we can go in. Yeah, we can go in here and say, um, I think it's padding, right? Let's add padding of, let's say 12 PX, see what happens. Uh, we're not seeing anything there. I think that's because it's a hundred percent. So we might not really know this. Uh, that padding happening there that's because that yeah so a bit tricky 
uh, well, let's try margin just to be sure, because sometimes I actually get it you know, mixed up, the margin and the pattern. So let's just see. Sometimes when you forget, just try different values and see if it, All right, so that doesn't work. Okay, so let's do this. Let's take it out of here and let's put it in here and let's create a padding on the right side. Um, I'm not sure, I think, well, I think it might create a, this might create a padding for each of the links. So I'm not sure that's gonna work, but let's see what happens, save that. I should see what I mean, it has spaced out, it has spaced out each of the links. It spaced out each of the links. Um, not the idea we're trying to do there, so I'm going to undo that. There are a lot of ways you can do this, so let's just, now, how about if we go in here and we put a border on the right side, right? You know, there's some, you know, some tricks, right? You, some some tricks you can you can use. So if we say border, right? And we just say um, just for now, four px four pixel solid red. So we put the border on the right side of the top links bar. Let's see what happens. Not seeing that border there. Border left. Okay, showing on the left side, but not on the right side. I need to see something here. Oh yeah, so we have a scroll bar. Now we shouldn't have a scroll bar here. Okay, so, all right. Okay, let's try um, something else here. Let's take this out. All right. Refresh the page. Okay, so, Here's a longer way, kind of like a longer approach you can, you know, use to, because when you want to, you want to put a space, de definitely you want a space there. But some, some people decide to do what I call cheat <laughs> and do something like this. So here, here's the code. Let's see if that works. Here's the code. Here's the code to create a space, like a single space, like when you tab on your, you, you click on your tab key on your keyboard. This is a code for a single space. So I'm gonna copy that and put, paste that here like four times. Now watch the edge here after the sign up, see if you see a spacing over there, refresh. So you see that space in there, right? So, so maybe that works for our purpose. We can add a couple more. Uh, couple more spaces. So this code is to create an actual space. This, uh, this stands for non-breaking space. The ampersand non-breaking space. All right, so maybe that works. We can just leave that the way it is uh, right now. Let's get rid of the background. But sometimes you gotta try a few different um, tricks. Um, you, as a web designer, you have the freedom to do that. Regular users, don't know what you did. They just, you know, look at your website and use it and do what they've got to do and, you know, and they're gone. All right. So let's remove the background color. We don't need that. I just call it transparent. All right. We're going to change um, the color. Let's say it's going to be white. The text is white. Okay. All right, so sometimes, you know, 
links don't have any hover effect, right? Sometimes they don't, but you might know, try to give it a hover effect. So uh, we're going to say text decoration. Uh, so let's let's do the hover, and we we want to have a hover effect, a hover. So all we're going to say there's um, text decoration on the line. So when you hover over it, something like that, right? So that might be fine. Let's space out the text. You know, it's kind of like a bit too jammed together. So what we did before, we can just add padding, padding to the right side of each link. Remember, these styles affect each link. Not the entire thing, each link. All right, so padding, let's say 8px, padding right, actually, padding on the right side. 8 pixels, so it's gonna add 8 pixel on the right side of each each word, each link. So just pay attention to that right there. Refresh the page. Oh, we, we we put that in the hover. Okay, so we need to copy that and put that also in the A right there. Save, refresh. All right, so that's fine. So that's how you create a fixed you know, a fixed, um, a fixed bar at the top of your, now you notice that in this zoom, they actually have two fixed bars. Um, there's another white bar with some more links here, right? So let's see how that is done. Let's do that. I mean, you should be able to figure that out now from what we've done so far. So we're just gonna grab this top links bar, copy it, and paste it down again and change the name. So whatever you want to be fixed at the top, it has to be outside your container. So we'll say, um, top links, bottom bar, something like that. So let's go here. Basically, we're just gonna copy everything we see here Copy this and put it down here. So we'll change the name. And then we'll change the property. So we're going to say that is, for now, let's just say that's silver. The width is also 100%. The height is going to be a bit taller. So we say 120 px. Position fixed. Um, let's see how that position fixed, if that works in this case. So let's save it and see what happens. Okay, so we have a problem. It looks like, let's see, did we change everything correctly? Oh, made a serious mistake. We kind of, we took out, no, we deleted the uh, closing tag of the top links bar. So that's why we have a problem there. So that should be here. Yep. And the top links bottom bar should have its own closing div. And, oh, no, no, this doesn't close here. Actually, wait a minute. That's, just, that's, a, that's a lot of mistakes there. All right, so this is where we should put it right here. Because this is, this, this three lines, 10, 11, 12, and 13, that's for the top links bar. So I think we put that in the wrong place. So that should be here. Yeah, right there. So top links bottom bar should be right uh, below the top links bar. Okay, right there. Just And before, it comes before the container. So save. All right. But 
Uh, let's see, looks like some things have gotten totally messed up here. This shouldn't close here. Nope. Pick that out. So this is the opening tag of the top links bar, and this is the closing tag. And this is for the top links bottom bar. So yeah, there you go. I think we some errors there. Okay. You know what, let me take this out, see what is happening. Take out that new bar. So this is what we have. Now we want to place this guy right here. So let's take out this position fixed for one second. Dave. All right. Uh, let's increase the size. Say it's going to be 140 or 150. Okay. So the gray bar is fixed, but it looks like you see the silver bar is not fixed. It's not fixed. Okay. So now if we apply the fixed, like we did before, we apply fixed here, position, fixed, it doesn't work. Save, refresh. Yeah, it doesn't really work. Okay. Um, yeah, you see, you can sum up the text. Yeah, it doesn't work. It seems to overlap the page. Now let's try some of the other options here. Let's try relative, see if it changes. All right, so yeah, now if you scroll up and down, it's on top of the gray bar. So that's not what we want. Let's try the last option here, absolute. I just want to see what's happening when you try some options. When you're uh, learning web design, you've got to try different options. You're not always so sure 100%. But you try a few options, do some little extra research, and then you figure out, okay, this is what, this is what works. So try the absolute and see what happens. Refresh the page. So absolute is doing the same thing. It's kind of, it's kind of like on top of. So we don't want that to, we don't want that, okay. So here is a, here's a, an idea, here's what we can do. Let's make, um, we're going to increase the height of the gray bar and make that fixed and then we're going to put the silver bar inside of it. Okay, so here's what I mean. So here is the uh, gray bar, top links bar. Let's make it 200. The height is 200. Save, refresh. All right. So that's 200 now. It's fixed. So we're going to grab the silver bar and just put that inside. Since it's already fixed, right? We're just going to put it inside. That way the whole thing is fixed. So we go back to the HTML. Now you've got to grab this here, cut, go inside, inside the top links bar on line 12 and paste your top links bar bottom. That way it's now inside the top links bar. Let's see if that works. There you go. So now it's inside. Now we're seeing some, some kind of a, uh, what you might call it now, like a little gap at the bottom. So it's not entirely, we want it to, to sit down right at the very bottom. We don't want any little, um, you don't want any part of the gray bar sticking out here. So 
Let's see what we can do about that. So we can say, if we go into the Okay, so first of all, well, let's, let, me, let, me, let me show you this. Sometimes the divs have some paddings just by default. Some, to just have some little stuff hanging around. So if you do padding zero to remove any kind of padding that might be there, okay, how about let's do the same thing for margin. If we have any kind of margins hanging around that we don't want to be there, in that top links bar. Let's see, let's see that. Okay, nothing changes. Okay, so let's try. Let's go over here to this is the bar. So let's say here we go to position also. Uh, position bottom, no, sorry. Um, yeah, because you can have position top. No, that's not correct. Sorry. <laughs> position relative. Let's just, I'll explain this in a second. Now we say bottom. Um, let's say 12 PX. So look at that. To see what happens, say right now, this top links bar is inside, sorry, top links bottom bar is inside the top links bar. So what we want to do is we're using a relative position um, to determine how far from the bottom, right, the top links bar, the top links bottom bar is placed. See what I mean? Let me just save. Let me save and re refresh. Okay. So right now we've 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 moved the the silver bar 12, 12 pixels from the bottom. We've pushed it up. So this space here is now twelve pixels from the bottom. So that's something you can do with relative. If you use if you change this to fix, it's not going to work. Look at that. So you see, it kind of jumps down to the bottom of the page. So in that situation, you have to use relative if you want to push that particular item relative to where it is. All right, so save. So it's right now, the silver bar is inside the gray bar. So let's change this bottom, this pixels here, so that it's closer to the bottom. Actually, we want to be at the very bottom of that gray bar. So let's try five pixels. All right, it's dropping down. We might need to go negative, negative five. Okay, now let's be sure that it's completely let's take a, let's say negative Two. Okay, so it looks like, how about one? Oh, one. Well, how about if we just say zero, what happens? Nope. So negative two. It looks like negative five was good, but let's just keep going, negative three. We're almost there. If you see, right, if we kind of zoom in on that, you can see that it's still right, right there. So negative four. Looks like negative five is gonna complete, it's gonna bring it to the very, you know, to the bottom like we want it to be. So negative five. There you go. So now everything is fixed, just like this Zoom page here, right? 
and then we can change the color to what we want it to be. All right, so now you notice that this text, right, is behind, text is behind. So we need to bring down the container, right? Push down the container. Now we know that the height, the height of this, um, of the gray bar, remember the silver bar is inside the gray bar. The height is, um, what? It's 200 pixels. So we need to, we need to kind of bring down the container 200 pixels from the top. So how do we do that? We can say same thing, position. You have, you have a lot of options of how you can do that. Um, if you watch some tutorials online, they might do it in a different way, right? But here's a way to do it, and you can come up with your own styles the more you learn about HTML and you get more comfortable. So say position um, relative from the top, Let's see if it works. Then we say top. Uh, say, let's just say 230 px from the top. Let's see what happens there. We want to see the very top of our text. So refresh. All right. So you can see it has dropped the whole thing down. So none of our text is covered. If you look at your text here. The first few words, bring HD video and audio to your meetings. That's the first thing we have here. It was all covered up before. So this looks okay. Um, depending on what, what your design is gonna look like, that might work for you, or you might you know, reduce or increase the space. So for us, that's fine right now. So usually, I mean, what do you put at the top here? You can have a logo, you can have a few different things. So. Let's look for a logo. Let's just say this is going to be uh, some kind of a, I don't know, travel site, travel. So let's look for something related to travel, like a, like a logo, you know? Travel website, logo. I just grab a logo here. Now, when you're dealing with logos, you might want to get a logo. Even in the real world, if you are doing this for real, you probably want to get a logo that is a PNG file. A PNG file will be kind of like transparent, okay? Transparent, you can see through it. So, this looks like an interesting logo. Let's view what it looks like here and see if it's a PNG, that's a JPEG. So we want a PNG, so let's be more specific, PNG. Yeah, so PNG pictures are transparent. Um, so let's grab one here that looks interesting. This looks nice, so let's see, this works. Or that's a PNG, see, dot PNG. So it's gonna have a transparent background. So I'm going to save this in my folder, save image as, go to the new folder you have, and it's a pretty long name. I'm just going to call it, you know, say travel agency logo. Or, you know, just keep it short, travel logo. Or why is it saying JPEG? It shouldn't be a JPEG. It's a PNG. So that shouldn't be JPEG. Save image as. Why is it looking at it as a, J, as a JPEG? It's not a JPEG. Now I'm just gonna call it a travel logo dot PNG. Uh, it's a PNG, we can see it's a PNG file. So I don't know why my edit plus is picking it up as a JPEG. So I'm just gonna change the PNG right there, save. And let's see if it maintains its PNG attributes. It's gonna be transparent when we use it. So let's see. So we want it to be right here, up here somewhere. So let's go in there. That's 
in here, use your I am image source equals, and then we paste the name here. Oh, what's the name again? Where do we save the file? How we saved it here? But I'm not seeing it. Did we make a mistake here? Let's verify. Looks like we saved it in the wrong place. Where do we save it? Oh, put it in the wrong folder. So I'm just going to cut, put it in here as where it should be, paste it in here. Okay, so that's a travel logo. Travel underscore logo. Right there. Okay, so put the name there, travel logo, the PNG. We, we're not adjusting the size or anything yet. Let's just see what it looks like for now. Save, refresh the page. It's huge. And it's not exactly transparent like we want it to be. So let's go and get a, a transparent picture. Let's see this. Save image as. This is still same JPEG. So I don't think the actual, they're not, they're not really JPEG pictures. Let's see this one here. When you say, it should tell you, you should say JPEG, you should say PNG. So let's keep looking and find a, a proper JPEG. Okay, so this is the, well, this is the same PNG JPEG. So it's not exactly what we want. Yeah, when you're doing this stuff, you've got to be patient. You know, you've got to be patient to find exactly what you need. So let's keep looking. Let's try this again. Website travel logo. I'm not going to say JPEG. Let's just see if we find the JPEG. Nope, that's PNG. Okay, how about let's try some. Let's just copy this directly. Let's just see what's going on here. Put a direct link there. Paste. To refresh our page, yeah, we shouldn't see this checkered background here. It shouldn't be appearing. Um, so, in the real world, you're going to have you know your client or your boss giving you you know the, the correct logo. So, we're just bouncing around here trying to find something that works for us. How about if we go here, we go to tools, size, and icon. Maybe we can find a logo that way. How about this? Okay, there you go. So. That's a PNG, and this is going to work. So, well, it looks like an interesting logo. We're just going to use it there. We spend so much time trying to find the logo. So, that works. We're just going to call that beachball.png. So, that's what I mean. 
if it's a true PNG file, when you save it, it's going to say PNG. So the others were just kind of like, I don't know, claiming to be PNGs, but they were really not PNG. So copy that, save in your folder, and then go here and put the name in there. Okay, so save it. It's going to close after many things open now. So close all these guys. All right. So where is it? Um, so I think it's in here. Oh, we have a text align right. So we should say text align left. Okay, it's here now, but somehow the actual picture is not showing. So let's, first of all, we've got to verify that we put it in the right spot, beachball.png. Uh, again, we saved it in the wrong place. So we seem to be saving it in the wrong place. That can be very frustrating. So you've got to, you know, if you don't find it, don't get so frustrated. Just you might have made a mistake, which we did now. So it's right here. So refresh the page and now so you see how it's transparent. That's what um that's what PNG files do. So let's move it up. It's move it up, reduce the size and all. So I'm just gonna do go here and say width. I don't know what width is. Let's just say it's gonna be um seventy five percent of what it is right now. Oh, that's not good. So how about we give it an exact width of 100 px? OK, not too bad. Make it a little bit bigger, 120. OK, and it's going to be fixed. OK, well, so all right. So now what's happening is our, we don't want this to happen. You see that the, what you might call it? Your container is now on top of, it should be at the, at the it should be behind. So we're gonna fix that. But the logo looks okay. If you wanna give it a little bit more width, you can just say 130. And if you want to push it in a little bit, we can say this is all inline style. So let's actually do this correctly. Style with 130, and then we say um, padding from the right side. Let's just say uh, 15 px. Give you some extra padding from the left side. Let's see if that works. All right, so you see how it shifted. But now we need to give it a padding from the bottom and push it up. So padding bottom and give it another 15 px. So padding from, oh, sorry, this is padding left actually. Padding from the left and padding from the bottom. Yep. All right, that's fine. So let's deal with this container that's overlapping our stuff here. Trying to mess us up. So let's go to the container. Now let's see if we change this to absolute, see what happens. But sometimes the absolute or the relative, you know, works a little bit differently. So let's save that and refresh the page. Well, that didn't go back. And obviously, if we use fix, that's not going to work. Nope. All right. So here is something we can do. Leave it. Let's leave it how it was in relative. And now, there's something we call a Z index. 
Z index. The Z index helps you to position. It's like in layers. So a website might look like it's flat. It looks like two dimensional to you, but it's really not two dimensional, right? Uh, things are in layers. Kind of like um, if you've used Adobe Photoshop, let me open up Photoshop here. In Adobe Photoshop, we have layers. So here's what I mean. Uh, if I open up a new page here, just a, just a random page, that's a new page. So I'm gonna put a, just a, a box there, put some color in there. Okay, that's my box. So I can come here to the bottom right hand side and create a new layer. So now I have two layers, right? So I can create another box. And at this time I change the color of the box to a different color here. And then let me paint the color. So now I've got two. Now I've got two. See, so so the I want you to call it the green, right? is a layer, a separate layer from the orange, right? The green is now on top of, I can reverse the position by reversing the position here. So I want to put the green behind. So I go here and now the green is behind, the orange is on top, okay? So a website is not really two dimensional, it's, 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 it's three dimensional, things are in layers. So let's see, so the Z index helps you to change the layer positioning. You can put some stuff up top, some stuff behind. A little bit complex. Um, so let's see if that works here with this guy here that's all the way up top. So let's give it a re re relative position of the higher the, the, higher the number, um, it indicates that the layer is, you know, is also on top. The lower the position, the lower the Z index, then it indicates um, how further back or how much under or behind, right? So you want it to be at the top, you increase the Z index. You want it to be at the bottom or behind other items, you reduce the Z index. So let's say, let's do a Z index here. Um, oh, let's just do 10. There's no PX or anything. Okay, nothing has changed. Now, how about if we change it to minus? Now you see that the minus kind of, you know, we went real, real low and pushed it all the way back, right? So, when you went to 10, actually, let's do something. Let's say, I mean, that works, and we can just move on, but just, I just want to get the idea. If we make it one, but that doesn't work because you have some items on your web, web page already. So those are probably at one. If you do zero, it also doesn't work. Also doesn't work, right? It's still, you know, overlapping. Now let's try minus one, not 10, minus one. Okay, minus one does it. So that's a real low number. So like we said, the lower the Z index, um, then the lower the position in terms of being behind all the items. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Okay, so that's the Z index there. Uh, I can just put a quick comment there and say um, places, items um, behind or on top of each other, something like that. Remember to write comments um, in your code to help you remember what all the different parts do. So this is fine. And just like the Zoom page, uh, you can scroll and you can see that everything is also behind, right, behind. So that's good. 
and we have our logo now, which is nice. And you can have a few, you can write some text there. Let's just say, uh, you know, this is, you know, beachtravel.com. Let's give it a nice name there. Let's go in here and say, right next to the image, we're going to call it uh, Beach Travels Inc. or Beach Travels Unlimited, right? That's the name of the company. Save. All right, so let's do some work on this Beach Travels Unlimited to get it to be exactly where we want it to be. So um, now here's another, here's another tab you can use called the span tag. It's kind of like the, kind of like the div tag, has some similarities. All right, let's save and refresh the page. All right. So let's add some styles also to that. So we certainly have to add, add the uh, positioning. So uh, position the relative. Because it's relative to that area then we say um, from the bottom, padding. Bottom. Let's say it's also 15 PX from the bottom. And that's not moving. Yeah, sometimes the span tag is a little bit tricky to use. Honestly, I've done this for so long and it gets tricky. So just gonna change this to div. Let's make it a div. As you get more experience, then you figure out some more tags and what they do. But you know, I just wanna give us tools that you can use and reuse and reuse, you know, less confusion. You can always get more knowledge yourself. So let's use the div, save that, all right, now, uh, oh, wait a minute. Div style, hmm. oh, this is a div here. Div, we had a span to close instead of a div. All right, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me. So the div style, <clears throat> relative position padding from the bottom um let's uh let's let's make this just five let's see what's happening wanting to be inside that grade inside the grid well inside the silver right how about if we take it out of here a uh, cut and put it before the image. Sometimes where you place the div matters. Let's see what happens there. Now it's on top there. So what we want to do is, okay, let's reverse it. Let's undo, undo, put it back to how it was before. Save, refresh. Now let's do this. Let's move it to the right side. So we're gonna say, um, if you wanna move from the right, you have to, your values have to be attached to the left. So basically you say this distance from the left side, that's how you get it to move to the right. So say from the left, let's try, I don't know, 45 pixels from the, from the left side. So now it's moving from the left side. You can also use percentages, but you know, you're more, you have a more certain number, a more, should I say, fixed number when you use actual number values than percentages. 
There are times when you use percentages, but now I think we just go with the number. So let's move it a little bit more. Let's say 115 pixels from the left. Okay, uh, a little bit more. 145 pixels from the left. You have a lot of adjustments that you're gonna make, so that's always gonna happen. Okay, now let's take it up top. It's not moving up top here, so let's see. Maybe we have to reverse this to be a negative number, minus five. Okay, it's not changed. How about minus 15? It's not moving. Well, let's take this to the top. The top. Okay, it's not moving at all, so we don't we don't want that to we don't like that happening. Okay, I'm going to move this here just for a second. Okay, so that seems to have moved, but then uh, why do we have this pattern here? Wait, let me undo what, what we did. Sorry, just give me a second there. We don't need this padding we have here. So why do we have this padding? Take out the padding. Or should we pad in top? It should just be top. We're using the wrong values. Yeah. So from the left, 175 pixels from the tap from the left, from the bottom. We're using the wrong values. What's padding top? It's not padding top we want to do. That's why we had a problem there. Okay. So let's say this is 45 from the bottom. There you go. So yeah, we have we wrote the wrong thing. Okay, so let's bring it a little bit down to the same line as the um You know where this ball is at. So say what, thirty-eight. A little bit more, thirty-four. Let me use my notepad like a ruler. Okay, thirty-two. And that should be fine. So use the notepad as a ruler. That works. So let's increase the size now. Now I'm using, um, obviously I'm using inline style because this style is going to affect just that text, right? So it's fine. You can do that. You don't have to put that in the external style sheet, but you know, you know all the options, so you're free to do what. Uh, what you, you know, the best option for yourself and your work. So let's increase the size. I'm going to increase the size now. Font. Font size. Let's say 32 PX. Okay, we have to move it up because you know the size has changed, but we can do that. What happens if we change the font family to this interesting font called script? That looks nice. Let's make it a bit bigger, about 52. Let's just see a flat number 60, a round number. All right, so let's move it up. Um, so it's bottom 32, now it should be bottom.
a little bit more. So I wanted to, let me use my notepad again as a ruler. I think that works perfectly. That's fine. And I can change the color, right? Maybe I want it to be this color here, right? As this blue. So you, you can go to W3 schools and look for a color that is close. If you scroll down, you see the color picker there at the bottom of the page. All right, so we're looking for a color that's close, close to what we have here. Some kind of a bluish. All right, so let's grab this blue and see if that works. The color of the text. So we'll say color. That's the color there. I think it's the color. So let's remove this, the color of this silver. Let's just make that white. Let's make it white and see. So this will be white or white. Let's just say white. All right, so look at that. That looks quite interesting, I must say. And then we have all our text here. So you can have as many things as you want um, in that top section. You know, you can put some more links there and stuff, but just trying to show you the possibilities you have on your website with colors, with logos, with bars at the top there. A lot of nice things you can do. And if you, now let's see this. Remember, we got to we zoom out. All right, everything still seems to be in place when we zoom out. The logo is there. Nothing is like falling off the page, maybe dropping to the bottom of the page or flying off to the side. Everything is staying in place, which is good. So come back to your normal zoom, um, the zoom view 100%, and that is, this works for us, right? So let's look at these buttons here, you know, this um, nice fancy buttons. Now, button, uh, we actually use buttons when we talk about forms, right? Forms. So we're not going to actually go there right now. Um, in the lecture, when we talk about forms, you're going to see how buttons work. But let me just drop it here without going into too much detail, not too much detail. All right, so um, let me just re let me reduce this, the height of this of this container. Just give it a random height of and 600. Okay, just make it, you know, not too, not too bad. Or, yeah. So let's take out all the text we have in there. Let's just put some, you know, put some, you know, maybe H, H, uh, H2 tags there. H2 tag. Let's say, you know, H2 tag here. All right, something like that. And then a couple more at the bottom here. H2 tag. All 
All right, and maybe check out some of take out some more text. Just want to take out some you know text so we can put the buttons there just for you to see what that's going to look like. All right, we'll still have a little bit more text here. Take out some more. All right, so that's fine. Uh, let's so let's put our buttons there now. Maybe reduce the size a little bit more, and then maybe even just make it a white background, okay? Um, or you know, a dark blue background, just kind of like what they have here, right? So we don't really need a lot of text if we want to look, you know, kind of mirror what they have here. So. Let's go here and reduce the size to 300. Uh, how about the, the background color? Let's say it's going to be dark blue. Uh, let's say the color of the text is going to be white. All right, so something like that. Well, there's still too much text there. So we probably should let's put a padding around around the edges. Say twenty five PX. See if that works. Um no, it should be the other way around. It should be inside, not outside. Inside the box. Um, that didn't work, so let's reverse it. Okay, we can even increase it a little bit more to 45. Okay, let's read, let's shrink the actual size of that container, the width of it. Because you know, remember when you add something, you got to take out stuff. So let's see what they have here. So let's make it 60 and then reduce the width here of the container to uh, one, what's that, one 200 minus 60? My math is failing me right now. One 140. 1140. Okay. All right, so this should be looking okay. If you want to if you want to match the colors that we've been working with so far, then we can decide to say maybe just a darker shade, a little darker shade there. Instead of the dark dark blue. All right. Okay. Let me do something dramatic here. I'm going to use a H1 right here, H1 tag. And it's a travel site. So I'm just going to say, tour the world. With us. Let's see if that looks dramatic. Okay, maybe it looks dramatic. Take out some of the text we have at the bottom here. Okay, looking okay. Take out a little bit more. Just seems like we pasted so much text there. Okay, so maybe that works. So now we want to put our buttons. I still got to take out a little bit more text. 
couple more lines and a couple more lines up here. This is fine. So now we can put the buttons here. Like I said, I'm not going to go into too much detail about how the button works, but I'm just going to place it there. You can see the code. And when we talk about forms, then we'll go into more detail about, um, about those buttons. So let's do it. So right here, I'm going to put a right here. You can see the button there. Let's just kind of break it, put a, a break tag. That's a break tag. A BR tag. Is a, I think this is the first time we're using a break tag. All right, so that's the button there. But now we've got to give it some size. So I'm just going to apply a direct inline style. I'm going into more details when we talk about forms. So I'm going to say the width is 100 px the height h e i g h t is i don't know 65 px let's see what that looks like okay it needs to be wider than taller so make it um 200 and make this 45 how about that Okay, so in terms of the colors, let me check this out. Background color. Well, since we're you know trying to you know follow this style, let's just do orange. You know, can I always change the color, but let's just do orange. All right, so that's your button there. Now let's. You can see some borders around it, right? Around it. So we're going to say border. Zero pixel. So we took out the border around it. And now you see the curvy things around it, right? The curves. The edges around it. So let's do that. That's called border radius. So let's say, let's try 12 px, border radius 12 px. Look at that. I think 12 is fine. So it looks like we need two buttons. You can always, you know, have as many as you want if you need it at all. So I can even add one more break tag here and push it down, push the button down a little bit more. So, so the button, uh, so what do we write on the button? We need another attribute here called value. So what do we write on the button? Just like this one here says C pricing. So we can say um, about book now. Look at that. So we can uh, let's go back to the style here and say color. It's going to be white. That's the text is going to be white. Save white, and we can say the size font size is 24 px too big how about 18. how about 16. 
Okay, you might want it to be bold also, right? Like bold. So book now, maybe this is gonna be book now, for N. And maybe you want it to be, the text to be a bit bold. So here you can say font weight, W A, like the weight, you know, of something and say bold. So you, you can see that it's a bit bolded now. All right, so let's add one more button there. Just this button is not going to work, you know, if you click on it, it's not going to go anywhere or do anything right now. We're going to go into when we when we talk about forms, we're going to go into how the functionality of the button. So just copy this here. One more. Uh, this is going to be a white button now. And we're going to say um, I don't know. I recall that book now. Okay, view reservations. How about that? So the color, that should be a darker color this time, right? So let's just say that's black or dark blue. Just to go with the theme, a color theme. View reservations. That color is kind of too dark for me. So let me grab some like here. Paste it right here. All right, that works. So you have a, you know, a kind of I mean, this border here, this, you might want to give it a maybe light, very light blue, like right here, maybe the lightest color, if that works, let's see. Looks like a bit, a bit too much white, but you know, it's totally up to you, but let's just see, go back here to that um, white, that's right here, paste it there. Let's see what that looks like. Well, it doesn't look too bad. And in fact, you can decide, see, that's how websites work, right? You can decide that the body of your, right here, right here, the body of your web page is gonna be that same color, no white there, right? So let's go up here, just copy everything you have here, go up to the body and put it right there. Paste, save, refresh. And now everything looks just like one solid page. So it just looks like one solid page in that color, right? It doesn't look like, you know, there's a top bar or there's a bottom bar. That's how websites work, right? It looks seamless, like, you know, there's absolutely, uh, like, you know, how they do that, you know? You, know, you want to do a website that when people look at it, it's like, oh, how they do that? So this very top bar now, we can also make the color something consistent with what we're doing. So if I grab this color here and say for the very top bar, because you got to, your website's got to be nice. It's got to look professional. The colors have to make sense. They just have all kinds of garish looking colors. So go to the top links bar and change the color there, paste. And let's say what happens. Yeah. So that looks nice. Or if you want it to be this same color, I don't know, let's see what that looks like. That's the container color. But same color for the top bar. Let's see what that looks like, paste. All right, so it's pretty consistent. The colors you have there are pretty consistent. So if you want to do that, if you want this beach travels to be a little bit darker, this actually looks interesting, just a highlight, just highlighting that, right? So if you want the beach travels to be a little bit darker, um, I can just grab this color here, go to the beach travels, go to my HTML, uh, where's the beach travels? That is up here somewhere. 
in the color, paste that, save, refresh. That may work for you. So I'm just going to leave, leave that that way, the way it is. Now, the last thing we want to do in this lecture is, remember what we said about the Twitter, uh, Twitter design, having a kind of rounded um, shape where you put a picture or some kind of image. So I guess we can maybe, let's kind of stick it over here somewhere, right? Just to see, you know, how does it work? Just stick it over here, right? Maybe that will be interesting. Let's see. So let's go to a, a HTML page. We need to we need a a div. Basically, it's a div, and we're going to apply radius. That's all. That's all that is. So let's go to the top links bar. Or just somewhere here for now. We, we, we'll figure out where where exactly it should be, or where we should place it on the page. So div um, style. All right. So let's give it a background color so we can locate it on the page. Let's say it's yellow. Let's say the width, the width is 200 px, and the height, h-e-i-g-h-t, is 200 px. All right. So where, where is it? OK, I don't see it. It's probably hanging out somewhere. So let's give it a position, position. Actually, you know what, let's take it out here. Let's put it up here just before the, the top bar, top link spot. Maybe you, you can see where it is easier, refresh. Okay, that's where it is right there. Okay, now we don't want it to remain there, but for now, so let's do this. We're gonna say, apply a relative position into it. So position, relative okay actually um let me see if absolute works here Give me one second. How about from the top? Say from the top, it's going to be 40 px from the top. The relative position is not working there. Fixed. Okay, so that's fine. If we zoom out, it's right there. Okay, so yes, so, so this is going to work. This is going to work. Position fixed, top 40. So looks like we need to increase the Z index so that it comes up top of everything. So Z index, let's say 10.
There you go. So that's fine. So we're going to move it now. So say from the left, actually, wait a minute. Position six, top 40 from the left side. We want it to be 300 pixels from the left side, say, okay, move it a little bit more. About 700 pixels from the left side. Okay, so we're going to put it right there somewhere, right there. Okay, so now the shape. So let's, let me take it to W3 schools. So you see some of the help that W3 schools provides when it comes to stuff like this. So we'll say round, rounded image. How to create rounded images. So this is exactly what we're trying to do, right? So, so first of all, you have your image tag and all that stuff, which we have. Well, we need to have the image. And then you're going to add um, border radius like that. So that's all it is. Looks like that. Looks like very, very easy. Just going to copy this here. Go here and say, just put it in here, border radius 50%, right? Save. That's it. That's like the easiest thing, what, since when? I don't know, sliced bread. So that's pretty easy to do. Look at that. Even when you zoom all the way out, then it, it stays where it should be. You bring it back in. So. Um, so I think that works. You know, it all depends on what you're trying to do and, you know, how you want it to be. Um, you can decide to bring it down a little bit more. So let's say we try to bring it down. So we say from the top, it's going to be you know, 80 pixels from the top, save. And I will push it down. All right, so if we want to put something inside, so let's say we look for some, something about beach travels. So let's say, Find a, a travel image or something. Well, let's grab grab this lady here. How about that? I'm just going to grab it directly from here. Copy. Um, so it's going to go in here. So I'm going to say that the background image right, URL, put my single quote. I'm going to use single quotes there because you have double quotes on the outside, right? So paste it there and let's see what it looks like. There you go. So now we've got to kind of move things around so we can, you know, look, see the lady's face. A lot of st stuff to move. So let's see. Uh, let's say, first of all, um, background size cover. Okay. Um, I want to just shift it a little bit more. So we'll say background position. say what zero px and 30 px let's see okay a bit more about 60 
Okay, it's repeating. We, we don't want it to repeat, so we're going to say background image, uh, background repeat. Repeat. No. Repeat. No repeat. Okay, so we've got to push the picture off. All right, so this is going to be where we at. The position of the picture, let's say, what, 10? Okay, that takes it up. How about five? Or minus five? Minus 15, maybe. It's dropping at the bottom there, so. Let's take out this, let's take out this background size cover. Okay, so let's take out background position. It's gonna make this 50%. There you go, um, 60%. Eighty percent. Want to see more of her face? Forty percent. Thirty. I think it's just what let's work with actual numbers. Okay, give me 30 here, 30 and 70. Okay, how about 20 and 80? It's got to be equal to 100%, I think. It's going, the, it's going the wrong way. Take this out, make that 60. The way you're doing this stuff, uh, it's a lot of work, guys. Oh, I, looks like I've been putting that in the wrong place. Okay. I've gone position 60. Okay, wait a minute. Uh, here's another option. Okay, we're close. 20, 80. Close fifty five forty five. Okay, what does fifty fifty do actually?
okay, you know what? I'm not going to take much more time there. You can always explore and tweak, tweak it as much as you want. Definitely want her face to be there, but it looks like it's very, such a big picture. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my Nick tool. I'm just going to cut, go here and cut. Something like that, right? Then I'm going to save it in my folder and use that, right? So show you different options. This stuff can be time consuming, trust me. And if you want a perfect job, then you're going to spend the time, you know, to look at all the options you have and get it right. So where are we at? Oh, my desktop is where I need to be. My folder. So let's just say um, um, travel. icon right travel icon I'm just going to keep it that way keep it simple i verify the name of the folder or the name of the file travel icon.png rename let me just copy this i like to copy so i don't i don't make a mistake when i'm typing close that go to my code so I say right here, this is it, right? Right here, paste the name. Now let's see what happens now if the picture shows us better. There you go. Right? So, um, so if I go here and let's say I grab some more of this text, some more here, right? Copy and then paste it at the bottom, you know, just right after the buttons. Put a couple BR tags, BR tags, and paste right here. All right, save. And now you can scroll down uh, let's see, can we scroll? Well, we can scroll because the box is now too small, but let me add this final thing. This might make things interesting because, you know, one option is to increase the height of the container, but you may not want to do that. You may want to allow the users to scroll inside that container. So here's what I mean. So let's go to the container. This is the container here. I'm going to add something here and say um, scroll. No, I think it's horizontal scroll. I think it's horizontal scroll auto. I checked W3 scrolls, but maybe that's why it is. Let's just be sure. No. So let's go back here. Let's say horizontal scroll. Yes, horizontal. No, not horizontal, vertical. It should be a vertical scroll, not a horizontal. This is horizontal. Vertical, right here, vertical. Um, No, that's not even what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a scroll bar, scroll bar, scroll bar. Yep, right here, overflow. Yeah, I think this is what we want. Let's do the try it yourself and see. Yeah, we want something like this. This is what we want. So over, overflow Y scroll, or overflow Y auto, overflow Y auto. So this is what we want here. So let's grab that and put that in there, if that works. So right here, 
over flow y auto save now watch this blue box here refresh the page now you can see right that now you can scroll inside it has a scroll bar for that so whatever information you put there as much as as much information as you put there you don't have to scroll the main page or the main browser in fact uh, if you want to get rid of this of this browser scroll entirely right let's make a quick adjustment here so our total height is going to be say 200 refresh the page and now there's no scroll bar in the browser so your scroll bar is in here as much information as you want to put there doesn't matter the users can scroll by themselves so let me add more info just more of this here just more just so you see how it works just trying to show you you know quite a few tips and tricks here of how we do things or at least give you options of how you can do things so this is not the only way but um you know you have quite a lot quite a lot of tools in your toolbox now and you can do a lot of more presentations and web design stuff and layouts uh you know on your own Okay, so let's see, let's refresh the page. So now we have a lot of information in there. All right, there you go. So you can keep scrolling down. And here is our completed website. In fact, you can decide to put a footer at the bottom here if you want. Uh, I think I think I said we should put a border around this picture just to make it a bit nicer. That's really easy to do. Just go to your where you have that picture uh, right here and just say border say two pixel solid just give me as many options as possible so that you can mix up all those different options from the Celtics website to this website or the layouts and mix them up to you know create you know a great professional looking website so solid white they want to put a border around see what happens so look at that so you can make it a thicker border let's say five that's not too bad okay so that may work all right um that may work and how about just one more thing here if we decide to make it i don't think that's going to work we added two Trying to like put two of those circles. We just got to move this guy if we want to do that. So we say left is going to be maybe 900. I kind of duplicated it. Look at that. It duplicated. So let's say I don't know 1,000. No, that's too much. Uh, 980, how about? Still too far apart. Too close now, 920. Okay. And you can put a different picture there. So let's just do that, put a different picture, and we can wrap this up.
All right, so I'm just going to use my snip tool again. Grab a nice shot of this airplane. Save it. I just call it airplane. Um, it's going to be a dust PNG. All right. So just go here and replace the name airplane.png. Save. There you go. So websites, so you can't really look at a website, you know, when it's completed, you're not going to, you're, you're not going to know, you may not know exactly how it was created. You have to see it develop from the, from scratch, right? So you can see that this, you know, website here looks pretty professional. We built it from scratch, right? And that's how we got to this level here with this images, with the buttons, with the logo up here, with the different colors, the, the fixed part of the website, okay? And if you zoom out, everything's pretty much, you know, it's pretty much where it should be. Nothing is really falling apart or dropping to the bottom, which is what you want. Okay, so the last thing now, we're gonna upload these files to the server, right? Your files have to be published. That's how you get to share it with the world. And suddenly, that's how you get to share it in this class and submit your work. So I'm just gonna close all this here so we can get that done. So you should go to the upload page. So the upload page, I have it here. Put in your name, I'm just gonna call this class work. Submit. And now you browse uh, to where your files are. My files are here. So my index, I'm going to grab the index first, upload. Make sure you see that it says your file is uploaded. Click on the link here. Now you can see that it shows me my work, but obviously I haven't uploaded all my files, right? So if you see this and you think, uh oh, um, my work is messed up. No, you haven't uploaded all your files. So you've only uploaded one file, the index file. So go and upload the rest. So oh, I made a mistake there. Yeah, go and upload the rest, browse, uh, grab your CSS file, more, almost like the most important file, upload. Now you see it's uploaded. Go to your open website or web, web page, refresh the page. You can see that it's looking good. The only things that are missing here are the images, right? Now, because the images are local to your folder or your computer, you have to upload the images. Sometimes we use direct images. We just do a direct link, but now you have to get your images there. So you're not done. You're almost done. Browse for the first image, the airplane. Upload. Refresh the page. That's your, that's your airplane. Got a couple more pictures. The beach ball. That's the logo. You see it's uploaded. That is right there. And you have the ladies picture, uh, the travel icon. Refresh the page. There you go. So once you verify that everything is fine, if you have to make any changes, make the changes on your computer, upload the file, and when you want to submit, you grab this link here, you copy the link, and you submit it as directed. Okay? So that's the end of this particular lecture. Um, the, the aim of this lecture was to show you a different style of layout, maybe a bit more complex. But you have a lot of tools now, different presentation styles or pre uh, different layout styles right and all the different um also items you can put on your website logos buttons you know um, rounded images fixed some parts of the website might be fixed some might have the scrolling included okay so you have a lot of options so that brings us to the end of this lecture if you missed anything rewind this lecture go over it again 
but you should have you should type you should recreate this website um, that gives you it's a great way to learn and to get used to typing and seeing how things develop okay so I will talk to you guys later.